welcome back for another video. Here it is then, exactly 115 preseason matches later, we have as full a picture as we'll get, and in this video we'll take a look at which players who are in form, and other important topics including budget players that are impressing, tactics used and more. To make life easy for you, I've compiled everything into a short video of everything you need to know. For this final preseason episode, I've added a new slide at the very end with a short list of the top informed players sorted by total goal contributions. There's lots of content to come here every week to help you hit your rank target and win all your mini leagues. Hit subscribe for more to come. Starting with Arsenal, who have had perhaps the best pre-season of all teams, scoring in every game and winning all but one, which was the 2-1 loss to Brentford with a heavily rotated side. New signing Jesus has been sensational, seven goals from the Brazilian, and he wrapped the pre-season up with a hat-trick against Sevilla. In fact, he scored more goals from open play that game than Lacazette managed in the whole of the 21-22 season. Typically, teams line up with the first choice 11 for their final game, and this was Arsenal's lineup. I'm expecting the same 11 to face Crystal Palace on Friday. Zinchenko has played in left back because Tierney's been injured, but he has returned to training since. Zinchenko's played really well and linked up with Martinelli down the left, however from an FPL perspective nothing particularly eye catch him. His heat map was barely in the opponent's half for the severe game. Interestingly he tucked inside a lot, essentially playing in centre mid, though he wasn't playing advanced in this role in an area to pick up potential attacking returns. He's at the very top of my watch list but for now I'm siding with Gabriel. Saka and Martinelli have had a terrific pre-season too and they're great picks for your Gemmit 1 draft. I can really see Arsenal starting this season well. Aston Villa kept clean sheets in their opening three games, followed by a tougher test against an informed Man United side. Bailey's been the standout and in my current draft as well. He's only 5 mil and he's playing right wing, and after a troubled first season of injuries, he recently said he feels much better and he trusts his body considerably more. It looks like Villa could play with Coutinho and Bailey either side of Watkins for Bournemouth in Gaming 1. In the Man United game, Villa were 2 down at half time, and Bailey came on and got one goal, one assist to level the game. Post match, Gerard said, If I had to pick my team for the real thing tomorrow, Liam Bailey's in my first team. He scored again in the final game against Wren. Archer perhaps is likeliest to get any minutes this season of the 4.5 mil forwards, but don't bank on it. None are expected to be involved much at all. Bournemouth have had an underwhelming pre-season, losing three and winning once. The only player worth highlighting is 6 mil Solanke, who has two goals. The 24-year-old was Bournemouth's main man last season in the Championship, scoring 29 goals and 7 assists, and I'll be counting on him in their hopes of staying up this season. Bournemouth have some of the worst opening fixtures, so he could be one to pick up a few game weeks down the line, potentially for 5.9 or 5.8 if he sees a price drop or two. Ibumo has been the most impressive in the Brentford camp with three goals in pre-season and just the one goal for Tony. They would have otherwise been on two goals each if not for an Mbumo penalty which was taken while Tony was off the field. Lewis Potter scored in his debut against Strasbourg. This is impressed with one goal one assist, but he and Lewis Potter could share minutes this season and neither look completely nailed unfortunately. New goalkeeper Sinus Trakosha has only made one appearance in the seven pre-season games, which was the match against the heavily rotated Arsenal side. So it's without a doubt that Wright is the current number one, and therefore he's a great pick for 4.5 mil. Brighton finished their pre-season on a high, winning 5-1, which included a Trossard hat-trick. Welbeck has led the line on a few occasions, including the final Espanyol game to end the pre-season. For now, Undav unfortunately looks like an avoid, but one to monitor in case he breaks into the first team. Trossard really hit form towards the end of last season as well, so he's another one to keep an eye on. Chelsea's pre-season has been a mixed bag. Mount has impressed, shipping him with a couple of goals. After signing for Chelsea this window, Sterling's played well too and taken up some very dangerous positions and he scored against Udinese. James has looked the sharper between him and Chilwell. In fact, in Chelsea's first Udinese game, that side looked like the planned 11 for Gemic 1, where Alonso was the one who started and left wing back. Chilwell could be struggling for fitness. Chilwell is therefore an avoid, but James is still a good pick. And although Tuchel experimented with a back four in pre-season, it looks like he will revert to a back three with wing backs for the Everton game. Crystal Palace have been the busiest side in pre-season. Zaha has been absolutely flying with five goals and three assists. Palace's opening four games are Arsenal, Liverpool, Aston Villa and Man City, so despite the form he's in a void, but if he can continue to impress even against the tougher oppositions then he's a strong contender to grab around Gemic 5 when the fixtures turn. I've watched a few highlights and Eze's look really tidy on the ball, and his 2021 season was disrupted by an Achilles injury and he could be in for a great season if he can stay injury free this time. Eduard Mateta and Benteke have all chipped him with goals, so the rotation may well continue among the forwards as it did last season. A pre-season of two halves for Everton, who lost the opening two and then won the final two. Everton signed McNeil from Burnley this window, he scored twice in his debut against Dynamo Kiev. 
Gordon and Gray also options for 5.5mm, but not from game week 1. Everton's fixtures look good after Chelsea, so perhaps a form player will emerge. Patterson has been one of few highlights for Everton. The 20 year old's been playing in right back with Coleman currently sidelined. He's done well too, with two assists in pre season. Mitrovic set a championship record last season, scoring 43 times with 44 appearances, and has continued to put them away in pre season with four goals and an assist. Fulham opened the season hosting Liverpool, which is an off putting fixture to start the Serbian in, but 6.5 was a great price and one to keep on the watch list. Pereira's been eye catching as well as the perfect bench player, and we've talked about him in past videos. In his first two games for Fulham, he picked up two assists and both were corner kicks. Leeds ended their pre-season on a high, beating Cagliari 6-2 with a Rodrigo hat-trick. No one from Leeds has caught my eye as an option for gimmick 1 honestly. Arison also picked up 3 assists in the Cagliari game but he's not tempting me. Melia is the only one worth considering from gimmick 1. Just a couple of seasons back, Bamford had a 194 point season. If he can stay injury free, he may re-emerge as a great pick, but 7.5 mil is a tall ask. For me, they somewhat overpriced him considering 7 mil gets you Robertson or Cancelo. New signing Sidisteris currently out injured and will miss gimmick 1. Barnes, Madison and Vardy have all done well in pre-season. Barnes was withdrawn as a precaution in the last game but looked like a minor discomfort. Pereira was also substituted with what looked like an Achilles injury. Certainly hope it's not a serious one but it did look concerning. If he's out for a while, Justin and Castagna could be somewhat more nailed. 5 mil Dewsbury Hall has been quietly impressive with 2 goals and 3 assists. For 5 mil I still prefer Bailey but it's an easy sideways move if Bailey starts poorly and Dewsbury Hall does well. Last campaign Leicester was second worst in the league for expected goals conceded as Schmeichel could be on his way out having reportedly agreed terms of knees. Subject to Leicester finding a replacement. On to Liverpool and big new signing Nunez has had a good pre-season, in particular the RB Leipzig game, putting 4 of Liverpool's 5 goals past them. One goal was a penalty which Salah gave to Nunez as a confidence booster as we saw Salah take the penalty in Liverpool's final game in the Community Shield. In the Community Shield both sides lined up with their best available teams at the time and this was Liverpool's lineup. Nunez was the scorer of Liverpool's third in the 94th minute assisted by Robertson. For now he's one I'm monitoring closely but I'd rate Salah, Trent, Robertson and Diaz ahead of him. Liverpool did end pre-season with a loss to Strasbourg but this was the next day and a fully rotated team. If this video has been useful so far, please consider liking it and hit subscribe for more content like this to come all season. Man City only arranged two pre-season games, their final was the Community Shield. Haaland was an unused substitute in the first game, Pep said he had a minor issue and didn't want to risk him. 12 minutes into his debut against Bayern Munich he scored, assisted by Grealish. Haaland has a poor injury record so it's a tough one between him and Kane. However, against Liverpool he took up great positions and had a couple of big chances which he failed to convert and he finished the game with 1.59 xG. Let me know in the comments what your preference is between Kane and Haaland. Laporte is out with an injury currently until September so City are looking quite light at the back. They are yet to sign a fullback either so it could be Walker and Cancelo first choice for now and that's exactly how they lined up in the Community Shield. Walker for 5 mils attempting option with such little competition for his spot currently. Man United have looked much improved under Ten Hag and I expect this to continue into the season. Martial has been playing his striker and thriving with 3 goals and an assist. Sancho and Rashford either side of them have played very well too. Ronaldo missed the entirety of the pre-season up until the very last game where he played in the first half only. There is a cloud of uncertainty surrounding CR7. If he sticks around then it could heavily impact Martial's appeal and perhaps Martial could share minutes with both Rashford and Ronaldo. Considering the uncertainty, Rashford has left my Gemic 1 draft, though I fully expect Sancho, Martial and Rashford to be the front three for the Brighton game in Gemic 1, and they could certainly do well. Dal is also impressed among the defenders, only 4.5 mil and he's been very attacking, he has hit the post and has an assist. 6 goals for Amron in pre-season. The 5 mil mid's never historically been an option in FPL, and realistically I'd be surprised if this were to change now, but his numbers leap out and the 5 mil's a fair price. In the 5 mil bracket, it's essentially Bailey, Dewsbury Hall and Almiron, all downgraded to Pereira for 4.5 mil. Bruno Gamaris has one goal and one assist, though Shelby has picked up an injury in pre-season, and I wonder if this might negatively affect Bruno with more defensive work to do. So Maximo could be the best of the Newcastle mids, but I'm not tempted from gaming one. Trippier is a standout in defence, 4.7 points per match last season before his injury and 3 assists in pre-season. He's on set pieces including some direct free kicks, just make sure he can rotate around his gaming 3 and 5 fixture.
No informed players to highlight for Nottingham Forest. 4.5mm forward Taylor scored twice, but he's in the same boat as the other 4.5mm forwards such as Greenwood, Archer and Plange, in that he's not expected to get any starts. Nico Williams has been getting consistent minutes and currently the best 4mm defender in the game. Lingard signed for Forest this window and comes in at 6mm. He made one appearance in pre-season which was the final match against Valencia, playing 77 minutes. Southampton have played 5 games with 1 win, 2 draws and 2 losses. No one tempting for Gemmick 1 consideration, but Stuart Armstrong's one I'll be watching. He's played a couple of games out of position in striker and only 5 mil. Hassan Hootel said, as a striker he has more freedom for what he can do. I think this is good for his game. He was driving with the ball and it's not so dangerous when he loses it because you have enough players to defend. I like this position for him. The Saints do have Adams, Armstrong and other players capable of playing a striker too though. New goalkeeper signing Bazuni played the full 90 in their final pre-season game. On to Spurs and it's been the Sun and Kane show in pre-season with the two of them involved in almost every goal. Kane scored five times with one assist. In fact the last three goals that Spurs scored in pre-season were all Kane goals, Sun assist. Kane vs Haaland is a big predicament in our game with one drafts and both have their merits. Tottenham's final pre-season lineup versus Roma was an interesting one. It looked like a full strength side and both Perisic and Doherty started in wing back. We may see Perisic start in game week one but then come off early. On the 30th of July, Conte said that he needs to continue to work because at the moment he's not the Perisic he knows and he added that this is normal and he's happy because Perisic has reduced the time to recover from his injury. So Perisic is certainly still an option but a little risky for minutes and still not quite 100%. West Ham have also had a busy pre-season with seven games played, however no standouts. Many will remember Antonio's explosive start to the 2021 season with four goals and four assists in the opening three games. This was right after he ended the pre-season with a few returns but nothing for him this time round. Add to that that West Ham have signed Scamacher so he's certainly in the void. Seven different goal scorers across West Ham's seven games. Suchek scoring twice, Ben Rama once and Burn with an assist. The Hammers kick the season off against Man City so they're a side not in many managers thinking. Bowen's the most owned of 8.2% ownership, but 8.5 mil is an awkward price point and the City fixture is an awkward one too, because immediately afterwards they've got three great looking games against Nottingham Forest, Brighton and Villa. New centre back signing Aguard is set for a spell on the sidelines after undergoing ankle surgery. Next up Wolves and then we'll finish with the final slide with the final shortlist of the top informed players. In the Wolves camp Neto and Podence have been eye catching, Neto is certainly the template pick and I expect Wolves to improve this season as they did struggle in attack last season with many injuries and they've got the right opening fixtures so he's worth a pump. Neto is the template 5.5 mil midfielder with 19% to Podence's 0.5% ownership. There's not much to separate them in my eyes though Neto may have some set pieces so just about edges it but certainly the 18.5% difference in ownership is not justified. Podence is very technically gifted and he passes the eye test. In the Bezegtos game, Jimenez was withdrawn with an injury which will rule him out for up to 8 weeks. It may be a very fluid front 3 as Wolves have no backup striker options, so we may see Neto, Podence and one of Gibbs, White or Huang in the front 3. Using all the data I've collected throughout the pre-season, I've put together this final table of all players sorted by goal contributions from goals and assists. Please do share this video around if it's been a useful one. Jesus of course is the standout and he could break the record for ownership this season which was Salah's 73% last season. Amaral's been flying under the radar for 5 mil as the second most informed player in pre-season in terms of goal contributions. For me, Bailey just about edges it but I don't mind the Amaral pick at all for that price tag. And Keta will be used lots this season, mostly off the bench so he's in the void. Watching Arsenal games, Arteta sometimes used both Jesus and Nketi up top together in a 3-5-2. Kane and Son's form has made it difficult to overlook them. Conte had a massive impact on their output after arriving last season and this should only continue. Martinelli's a phenomenal pick for 6 mil, the best at that price tag and will start on Friday versus Crystal Palace. Despite the form of Nunez, he's still a risky one as there's a small chance of Firmino starting in game week 1 and he did start ahead of Nunez in the Community Shield. His link up play is crucial so just be wary of that. Elsewhere Salah looks a lock for my game week 1 team as is Trent who has 3 goal contributions. Robertson has 1 assist too which is worth pointing out although he misses out on this table. I've thoroughly enjoyed putting together these pre-season updates and thanks for watching them. I read every one of your comments so drop one below. Hit subscribe for more FPL content like this to come every week all season. See you soon for the next one.